Hello, trading has closed on October 26, 2020. Store disclaimer, go over our calls. See what this is it, and we'll see what's the significance of today's break, which I probably haven't figured out as well as I would like to. So my trading plan for tomorrow, Thursday, October 27th, 2020. Trade at your own risk because I can't guarantee the plan's right. Here's my email address. Well, I think the first thing we should do is go over what we said. We have resistance at Friday's high, and we said that if we're, if we're going to continue the rally on the beta, we should gap over it. And almost always, Friday's move carries through into Monday. But it's negative if that didn't happen. So obviously, we didn't gap up, we gapped down. All these higher ideas were killed before the open, and we gapped smartly in the wrong direction. And we said if we dropped early, it was a negative thing. We did say it wasn't guaranteed the rally would continue because the close didn't, because the, the close did not recover the opening print. So that was one of the possibilities we mentioned. We had the assumption a new rally leg was starting, but that was dependent upon Friday's low holding, and that did not hold, so that interpretation has to get killed. Now we looked for the pattern with the early low. It's pretty unrecognizable until the afternoon when the times worked perfectly, but I think this is early low, and tomorrow also has the early low. During the day, we got a sell signal and an ultimate sell signal, and that's enough to satisfy the signals. It did say this rally wouldn't stick. We've already had the retracement. These lines are TDST lines. They might offer some support here, but support goes to a bar under the line. It's no guarantee we hold here tomorrow. It's possible to come up with a wave count that says the drop's over even though the ending diagonal triangle idea is killed. Frankly, it looks kind of a force count to me. It doesn't look natural. and it doesn't look natural, it's probably the wrong count. The original idea is that maybe we finished wave blue C. It's not what I was expecting, because I was expecting more of a drop something comparable to wave blue A. We did have the fibs. We did recover this old high. And that's not bad. So if we had continued higher, we would have just had to chalk it up. This is still a, this is still a positive interpretation calling for higher prices. Even if my alternative count turned out to be right, it was still a pretty bullish count. But I don't like today's action at all. And I've only come up with one way to come up with a negative count, which would be that wave blue C isn't, is not, is not over. That this is wave blue B and we're still in wave blue C. If this is the end of B, this could be A and this could be B. This has a few things going for it. Here was the old high way back when. That's now 88.66% of this recent high. It's a FIB number. It's not the most common FIB number in the world. But it is a number making this a target of the earlier high. We call this a fail 2B top, but if this is a double top, this could be the 2B top reasserting itself, which means you break falsely over the old high and then reverse. 
To connect these lines, these points, draw a parallel channel. And then draw a parallel channel from this low. We broke through it today in grand style by gapping under it. So that's a break of major support. We're right at major support. We get by ignoring this low and connecting this low and this one. But if we break through that, it's hard to see what's going to hold us up here. Now, we haven't broken through it yet. But if we do, and that's A, and that's B, and we're still in wave blue C, if that's right, we don't know that at this point. If you set wave C of C equal to twice A, you get a 50% retracement of that leg in the 2790s. Now, I'm not predicting that, but if we do keep on dropping here, it certainly is a number that makes a lot of sense. We'll just pencil that in. We haven't broken this line yet. We haven't even confirmed this break. We just have to be aware it's a pretty serious break when you have a positive pattern which doesn't follow through. And normally it doesn't stop after just today unless today gets reversed quickly. Let's take it a day at a time. The mouse pattern has the early low we could gap up. There may be a recovery of sorts tomorrow since we get down, hit a lower low, closed over multiple lows. That being said, we have a break of a major support level. All that's necessary for us to confirm the break is to trade under, the, is to trade under today's close. Again, the amount doesn't have to happen tomorrow. I think it's likely at this point, not guaranteed till it happens, I think it's likely we are going to trade under today's close and have another leg down. But um, until we get that break, there's still the potential, greatly reduced, of recovering from today's action. Tomorrow's pattern has the early low. We're kind of on tenter hooks here because if we don't get a fast recovery of this break, then whether it occurs tomorrow or not, we should still be in this wave blue C down with appreciably lower targets. But again, I take it a day at a time, just looking for the pattern with the early low tomorrow, a good chance of recovery if this low holds because we had this gap down, lower lows, and closed over. So possible recovery tomorrow, but look for resistance at the origin of today's break and look to see whether or not that holds. I'm not even predicting we're going that high, but if we do, look, look for resistance in that area. And that's today's call.